Good afternoon, everyone. Looks like it's 1.30. We'll go ahead and get started. All right, looks like we have most everyone here. I see a few people still coming in. So I thought we'd kind of do uh, check-ins with tornado-affected districts on how things are going and just any developments, uh, new changes in your communities that have occurred in the past couple of weeks, some new new challenges, uh, new developments, just anything that you'd like to update us on. Uh, then we have uh, with us, uh, Robin Kenny is on. She can talk about the uh, safe funds and the distribution process that we've been working on around that. That's one of the takeaways from our last meeting. Um, we were going to uh, pull together a process around that and then um, talk about that with you today. Uh, and also uh, any updates on uh, movement around stabilization of funding for the next several years. It's one of the things that the committee hearing last week in the, in the Senate that uh, we heard uh, several tornado impact superintendents talk about the need for that, and we have a bill introduced now that will do part of that. So, uh, Robin, if you're available to provide us an update on that, I think that would be great. And then, uh, Tony, I see that you're on. Just any updates that you might have over that effort to sort of highlight and recognize um, heroes and uh, great stories that have emerged uh, out of the tragedies in our uh, tornado impacted uh, communities. So I thought we could cover that as the agenda and then we'll we'll stop at the end and just see if there are any other items that folks want to add and talk about uh, do we want or uh, wish to meet again in a couple of weeks. So let's just start out uh, going back to the front of that um, uh, agenda with any uh, tornado impacted districts that want to come on and just update us on things that are happening in their communities, how things are going, just any information that you'd like to share, just an update. We're nearing the end of the uncomfortable wait time and we'll move into the conscription phase next. Uh, uh, I wonder if somebody could just tell us uh, things that are happening in your communities just as you work to recover from the tornadoes. Mr. Glass, can you hear me? I can, go right ahead. This is Charles yeah, Hickman, Taylor County Schools. And um, I'll just try to help you here and not make it so uncomfortable, uh, but we have, uh, we, we actually just received a, another load uh, from a group uh, from Pulaski County yesterday with a backpack program. Uh, uh, I can't remember the exact name of the group, but they were they were gracious. They didn't want their names mentioned. They just uh, they brought a whole trailer load of, uh, of, of things that elementary kids would use. Uh, so we've already started distributing that. And that they even talked about that they're going to be working in phases. And, uh, and throughout the year, they're going to keep distributing uh, uh educational goods to, to the school districts. And also, um, I don't know if anybody's going to speak of it, but they may, but there's a meeting down um, at Greg tomorrow uh, where they're presenting some gift cards and items to several of the districts that have been affected. And uh, so people are still reaching out. Uh, we still have a long way to go, but uh, you know, everybody uh, seems to be uh, positive about what's going on. And if we could just control this weather and the COVID, uh, maybe we could get back to normal. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. Uh, yes, sir. Appreciate that update. Uh, I know that we, I saw Gretchen on here earlier and uh, uh, I saw that uh, Gary Fields had come on. So I don't know if you want to speak from uh, your experiences. And uh, Jeremy, if there's something that you want to add as well, please go right ahead. I'll just add from from our perspective, you know, everything's going really well. We're, we're, we think, we feel like we're meeting the needs of the families the best we can. You know, all the other things that are happening, you know, in addition to the to the tornado and the damage um, we've we've had, uh, we've enrolled about uh, 30 Afghan students in the last week. So that influx is now coming in, um, had been delayed. So that's, you know, just all those, you know, as everyone on this call knows, uh, school is still happening and all these other needs. So 
we're just trying to prioritize that. Greg's been great. We had a number of uh, uh, toys uh, delivered from uh, the First Lady's uh, toy drive. We have about 15 pallets, and we have plans to get those out uh, in the coming days and weeks. So, um, you know, just just managing it all. But everybody's been great. It's uh, we're very fortunate. Great. Thanks, Gary. Uh, Gretchen, is, uh, can uh, a report out from some of your member districts? Sure. Um, so I think uh, everyone really echoes what Gary just said. Um, I, I just want to give a shout out to you, Commissioner Glass and Tony at KDE for um, recognizing the work that the superintendents have done during this time. Um, it's heroic. And I think if, if nothing else, um, the message should be that our schools are the heart of our community. And um, these these folks really lifted up their districts and their communities during this time. So thank you, superintendents, and thank you, Commissioner Glass and Tony, for um, taking the time to, to allow them to be recognized. Great. Thanks, Gary. Thanks, Gretchen. Appreciate that uh, update. And Eleni, I've seen that you've uh, come on. Uh, we were just checking in, see how things are going in your communities. Any any uh, news over the past couple of weeks from uh, from Dawson Springs? Uh, thank you, Commissioner. Uh, we just got uh, things are looking up here. Um, you know, we've got a lot of debris that's been removed, a lot of large debris. Um, it's really amazing the amount of work that's happened over the last few weeks. Um, I mean, the, the really a, a, great, a great portion of it's been dented somewhat, uh, but things seem to be going pretty well. Um, last couple of days of last week, uh, we ended up not being in session due to COVID. We didn't have enough staff to be able to have school, uh, but we're back in this week and, and things seem to be going pretty well, although it looks like weather may be coming upon us. So, uh, a lot of good things going on. Um, it's just going to take time and, and really trying to get back into a routine and, and just some, you know, regular interaction with kids is what we're looking forward to. Thanks, uh, Lenny. And um, at the outset, I uh, just mentioned uh, the testimony that you and uh, the other superintendents had uh, before the Senate. Um, we all thought you did a great job. So hats off uh, for that. I see that uh, Robin is asking if there's any um, update on mental health e efforts uh, from WKEC. Any, anyone can provide an update on that? Uh, is that in the chat? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. Um, we have been doing a lot on our end at WKC in the mental health aspect, we have a team. Um, and I, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and share this here. We have a, a crisis intervention team that has reached out to our districts to support them as they bring students and teachers back to school. Um, I actually mentioned something to one of the legislators while we were up there to see if that's something that maybe we could take statewide. And I'm not sure if that's what Robin's referring to, but, um, the work is important uh, now more than ever with COVID, with the weather, um, just so I think that's what she's referring to, but um, we sure appreciate the support from um, the grants from KDE. It's helped us to really bolster our efforts and, and um, do some great work in our districts. Great. Thanks, Gretchen. Um, well, I'll stop here and just see if there's any anyone else that wants to come on. Just uh, quick updates from how things are going in your communities, just progress or things to share. We've heard from uh, a few of our tornado impacted districts. Uh, uh, well, so we'll pause here and just see if there's anyone else that wants to weigh in. And, and then we're going to turn to uh, Robin to update us on uh, the safe funds and uh, legislative progress. Dr. Glask, uh, this is Robbie Davis from Muhlenberg. Can you hear me? I can. Go right ahead, Robbie. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. I've tried to get in. I cannot get the link to work, so I've I've called in. But uh, just to kind of echo what what the others have said. You know, things are moving forward here. Uh, starting to you know kind of seem a little more hopeful about some things. But uh, Greg and WKC have been amazing too with all they've done. Amazing amount of gift cards and that we still have to give out. And uh, so we still have a lot of stuff. It's just we continue to worry about the longer term things like housing and and all that but uh, we're very appreciative of uh here of just so many people so 
uh, really nothing to add other than the other ones, other than it does feel like we're, we're, we're moving in the right direction. Great. Great. That's great to hear. Excellent. All right. Go yeah, ahead. Let me chime in. I just want to say thank you. Uh, nothing new other than what they said. Thanks to everybody. I thought the legislative day, uh, while that's not necessarily something I always want to do, I felt like it was a worthwhile expenditure to get up there and talk to some guys and just see, uh, see that they, they uh, are supporting what what uh, we're dealing with. So, uh, uh, you know, I know it's different everywhere. We talked about that a lot, but just thanks for all the support in that direction. It's coming down this way and been pretty helpful. Excellent. Now, we all thought you did a great job. And uh, I, I um, slipped in at the back of the meeting and just uh, listened in. Uh, so I was there too, but I know a lot of folks watched uh, the uh, simulcast of it. So it was, uh, you all did a wonderful job at that. Um, Robin, let's turn things over to you just to update folks on where we are in the distribution of the safe funds and then also just progress around uh, the long-term funding stabilization ask that uh, the superintendents asked about during the Senate uh, hearing. Thank you, Commissioner. It's a pleasure to be with you all again today. Um, And I want to also echo the Commissioner's comments about the testimony at at the over at the legislature uh you all did an outstanding job and i know i say i've said it before but i'll say it again um you are your own best advocates and so for them to hear directly from you the needs of our districts it makes such a powerful impact um i have had some follow-up calls as a result of your testimony and so i can't tell you how much we appreciate you taking the time and effort to come and testify in front of the general assembly Um, I'm going to first talk about the Western Kentucky State Aid Funding for Emergencies Fund. Um, I had someone ask me earlier, what is the SAFE Fund? They kind of leave off the Western Kentucky part when they get to the acronym, but that's what it stands for. It is the SAFE Fund. Um, And we've talked about it previously. We talked about it, I think, on our last um, huddle that we had here. But now we're ready to share with you some information about how you can start working toward the application process and access of these funds. So if I can just um, give a little bit of background again, uh, the SAFE funds are a result of law that was signed on January 13th um, in House Bill 5. And there was a total of $200 million appropriated toward the SAFE fund, $155 million that will be administered by the Department for Military Affairs um, Emergency Management, and then there's $30 million that is coming to the Kentucky Department of Education, specifically for school districts, and then another $15 million going to the Department of Military Affairs for uh, temporary FEMA-eligible housing, and I think I've Uh, seen some media um, on some of that housing actually being delivered to some of the Western Kentucky districts. So that's that's great news. Um, Out of the 30 million that is directly appropriated to KDE to kind of administer on behalf of the districts, um, those that 30 million can be used for three specific categories. And this is specified in House Bill 5, but I'll just kind of briefly go through those three categories again for you. Um, providing the necessary wraparound services for school children and their families in recovering from the impact of the storms, including after school services and activities held at school facilities or elsewhere in the community, mental health counseling services and outside of school tutoring and other services to advance the scholastic progress of students. So it has some specific things identified, but then it also kind of leaves it a little bit broader that we could have some flexibility, I believe. The second um, eligible expense is to assist school districts in assisting, in assisting you with additional transportation costs to provide transportation to students that are displaced as a result of the storms. And then the third category allows us to transfer a portion of this 30 million to the School Facilities Construction Commission um, to offer funding for the construction and repairs of school building facilities that have been destroyed or severely damaged by the storms. If you do receive insurance proceeds as a result of um, the damage to your buildings, then it does require the school district to reimburse the fund if we advance those funds in the first place. So we have developed a short application that we will be posting and we'll post it um, on our state grants page. Um, Many of your 
district finance officers are familiar with that state grants page. It's where we post your state allocations, as well as um, information about Flex Focus or Gifted and Talented, any of those state grants that you may either apply for or receive. So that's where we will post the application. It is a very short application trying to um, really not burden you with a lot of administrative work to access the funds. We will basically ask you to respond in each of those three categories, both costs that you have incurred already. So there will be a narrative portion that you'll tell us what you've already incurred already and what you um, expect to incur for the rest of this school year. So that would be through June 30th of 2022. We're just going to ask for that application process first. Um, we know that as costs are still being developed and expenses you are still learning about, we thought we would take this in chunks. So there, your first application will be through June 30th of 2022. Um, you will fill out a short narrative on each of those questions, and then we'll ask you to do a high level budget um, of what you expect to expend. So uh, again, your finance officers will be very familiar with what this looks like. They've done this before for us. We try to keep it as simple as possible. Um, we will ask you to give us as much detail as you can um, in a narrative paragraph form. We're not asking you to write pages and pages, just a paragraph form of both those costs you've already incurred and then costs you will incur. So for example, in the additional transportation, if you are a district who has been impacted by the tornadoes and you have a good district neighbor beside you that is providing um, either additional buses to you or drivers or they're transporting a certain portion of the way where you're picking up students from that location, um, they can send you an invoice for that cost that have been incurred. You can submit that to us and then we'll reimburse you. So a very, very, we're trying to keep this as simple as possible so you can kind of share with us information. And then um, once we approve that application, uh, we will receive these on a first in, uh, first out basis. So as we receive those applications, we will review primarily to make sure that your anticipated expenses or expenses already incurred meet in one of the three categories. For the first two categories, the mental health wraparound services and the additional transportation expenses, we will be primarily reimbursing you. So you will expend the dollars and we will reimburse you. There is a section on the application that allows you to tell us if you are having difficulty and you need advancement of funds, uh, we'd like you to use the application to share that with us. Um, but for categories one and two, that mental health wraparound services or the after school activities, those supports for your students, as well as the additional transportation, we would like you to, uh, we will reimburse you for those costs. For the third category, which is about damage to your buildings, we'd ask you to put in the narrative, the damage to your buildings and the anticipated amount that you would need we will then need to work with the School Facilities Construction Commission because we actually have to transfer funds to them for distribution. So KDE will not be transferring any funds for building work. That will go to SFCC and they will administer that process. So let me let me pause for just a minute. I will share that we will ask you to um, affirm um, as superintendents really three kind of broad statements in the application. Um, and what we are asking you to affirm is that the narrative and the budget that you will be submitting to us is factually accurate to the best of your knowledge and belief. We will ask you to affirm that your financial need and request is based upon the cost incurred or to be incurred as a result of the impact to your district by the December 2021 storms or in tornadoes. And we will ask you to affirm that if you receive insurance proceeds, for any of your building needs that we that SFCC would provide to you, then you will reimburse those amounts that were received as insurance proceeds. Again, a simple application. And let me let me pause there for just a minute and I'll see if you have any questions about the application. Again, we will have this posted today on our state grants page and you'll be able to see it um, 
but literally what we've done is pulled the language exactly from the bill for you to pro provide your narrative around. Let me pause there for just a minute and see if we have any questions. And then we'll go to the second part of our kind of update on this where Karen Worth, our budget director, is actually going to talk to you about what you submit in order to receive the funds. Let me stop just a minute and see if anyone has any questions about sort of our thinking around the application. Okay, it, it doesn't look like we have any questions yet. Um, Karen Worth, if I can ask you to join us and just kind of talk to us. Karen's got a couple of slides that she's going to show. And um, this is just to help you understand uh, the email for the application will be in her slides and she'll be able to talk to you just the process to request the funds. Karen. Thanks, Robin. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for having me this afternoon, and it's good to hear um, positive things coming from everyone because you know that we've we've really been our hearts have been with you all. Um, I wanted to share just the process. Robin has talked about um, the application process, and on that state grants page, um, you're going to see not only the application, but you're also going to see what we call the um, safe district expense form. Um, any of you that have MOAs with the department are familiar with this form. Uh, we use it internally and with our partners to um, document um, deliverables and milestones and, and to submit with, um, with their invoices. So it should be a pretty familiar form to your finance officers. Um, the slide here just kind of talks about um, how to access those funds. Once your application has been submitted um, to uh, this KDE safe at education.ky.gov mailbox. Um, you'll get an approval back uh, from someone here at KDE in our district support services uh, division. At that point, um, then you can submit to us this district uh, safe expense form. Uh, this form would then be accompanied with um, a munis report. Uh, we have assigned a 15 WI for the project munis code for the safe funds. So we would just need you to run um, as your invoice um, a munis report on that project code. You can submit that all electronically to this mailbox. Um, and I have staff here in the budget branch that will um, will monitor that and first in uh, will be first out as far as payments go. Just to touch a little bit more on what Robin shared about the detail. Um, we do, um, the bill does require that KDE submit a report to LRC on the 10th day of each month. So we will be collecting the information that you submit to us on those documents so that we can complete the, the uh, report to submit to LRC. So any type of detail that you can supply us would be helpful uh, for us to be able to display exactly how these funds are being used. Um, just for your all's, um, just, just to see, we also have um, an example here of what the expense form looks like. Like I said, it's very, very simple um, and it, it looks exactly like our KDE expense form. We've just adapted it to the safe, um, to the safe funds. So listed here are your two categories that you can file for reimbursement. Uh, you're going to put the amount of money uh, that you've expended uh, that you're requesting in either of those categories. And then this other section would just be asking you to provide some um, additional description or detail as to how the funds were spent. Robin, I'll send it back to you. And then Karen, as far as any um, other backup documentation, we'd like to request the districts will keep your backup documentation, your actual invoices received from service uh, vendors that may have provided services or other neighboring districts. We are, we're asking you to keep that at the district level. That's um, you know, there is a possibility at some point in time, someone will come knocking and asking to audit or review the expenditures, whether that's um, the auditor of public accounts or someone else that's asking questions. So we'd ask you to keep all that backup documentation at the district, um, um, even though we're trying to make it as simple as possible, what you're sending to us. Absolutely. And those documents are available on that state grants webpage. They did post this afternoon. So any questions, there is a contact um, name and number and email address at the bottom. Uh, Terry Mason would be your direct contact, or you can always reach out to me um, at karen.worth at education.ky.gov. 
Thank you, Karen. And and additionally, obviously, we're going to have some districts that have kind of unique and different questions. Um, we encourage you to call us at any time. We've talked to many of you already about would this fit or may, would this be covered? And so if you if you or your finance officer would like to reach out to us individually and talk to us about things that um, might or might not fit in the categories, we're happy to have that conversation with you as well. So that's all we have prepared. Um, again, waiting for just a minute to see if anyone has any questions. Really good that those have already been posted. So please share with your staff that might be working on this initiative for you. And if they have any questions, uh, please direct them to call any of us here. OK, thanks, Karen. Thanks, Robin. Um, Robin, uh, do you have any updates on um, the the longer term bills and, and uh, what's been introduced or proposed and where those may end up? I, I really don't, Commissioner, at this point in time. I don't know if Brian Perry is on the call. Um, our legislature. There's Brian. Hey, Brian. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I know that we've done a lot of distributing of information to um, people about the needs of our districts, um, yes. including both that seek stabilization piece that we've discussed before. And we've also talked about uh, that potential loss of revenue that some may experience, as well as the uh, disaster days. Um, so all those pieces that we've talked about here before, we kind of uh, bundled together. We provided that to the co-ops and districts. And I don't know if Brian has any updates on any conversations he's hearing over across the street. Uh, so I also just wanted to mention, I couldn't, I, I was trying to pay attention to dropping off another laptop for me and got distracted. But in case we didn't mention it, we did send a letter to leadership as well as uh, Representative Heath and Senator Howell, uh, just as a follow up to the committee meeting last week, uh, mm -hmm. just let them know the process for distributing those funds. Um, so that's out there. Um, just wanted to mention that. Um, late last week, Representative Dossett introduced House Bill 397. Uh, this is not, it's only been introduced at this point. It hasn't even been assigned to committee yet, uh, but it's uh, a way, it would waive up to 15 day student attendance days uh, for school districts that were closed due to the tornado disaster and consider waive days to be completed employment contract days for school personnel. So I think that was one of the requests that was mentioned um, so that's out there. That's the only one that I've seen so far. Um, so obviously we'll be following up with some of the, uh, some of the representatives from the Western area uh, to see if there's plans on doing anything else. So the, the seek freeze, I would think is most likely to be in budget language. Um, the bad news there is that that's go a ways off. Um, the Senate is pretty clearly going to take their time uh, with their version, so it may be a month or so before we hear what they're planning on. Um, so we may try to get um, some indications sooner than that if they're planning on including that in their budget language um, and try to get a feel for what they're doing with that. So that's about all I have. Brian, I was going to say that if anyone is interested in sort of the language that was drafted, it did get included in the governor's recommended budget in House okay. Bill 85. So that seek um, language about um, holding holding at levels, prior levels, sort of a stabilization, at least for the term of the budget bill, was included in the governor's recommended budget. So in case anyone's interested in that, we did provide that language to the governor and he did include it in his language. OK, thank you. OK, thanks, Brian. Thanks. Um, Robin, um, I think we've uh, concluded the legislative and financial updates uh, for now. Anything else, Robin, that you need to uh, cover? No, I don't think so. That application is posted, so districts can begin work on that, you know, as soon as they can go out there, take a look at it, and have their finance officers take a look at it as well. Okay, great. Thank you both. Uh, Tony, let's have you come on and just update folks on uh, efforts that we've had underway around. Oh, go ahead, Lenny, with your question. Real quick, on, on that application uh, that you was mentioning, will that come out with a link on the email to us or some way that we can easily get to that? Or will my finance director be able to easily get to that? 
We we can send it to you. We can send you a link. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if that would be helpful. If you could okay. just send an email out with that link on it, that would be helpful. Thank we'll you. We'll be happy to do that. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, Tony, let's go to you for updates on um, uh, sharing stories. Yeah, just um, real quick, and I appreciate, thank you, Gret, uh, Gretchen, for um, helping us kind of get everyone together last week. I know some of you were able to come up to Frankfurt um, for the um, the citation from the House of Representatives and then the uh, resolution recognition uh, on the Senate floor. So um, just really, really grateful to have the support of our, of our lawmakers that um, you know, we're able to share some of the examples that that took place in your in your districts. Um, I shared a link there just in case it went out as a press release. I think it went out. We got a lot of um, hits on that. So I think a lot of people were were happy to see that. Um, and then also, I just wanted to let you know that today, um, Dr. Glass's column has been published in Kentucky Teacher. And um, you will see if you um, if you talked with uh, either me or my staff, you will see um, some familiar names from your from your districts there. Um, we, you know, named uh, principals and and anybody who you all told us did a great job. We have some really great examples of of work that they did um, following the tomato the tornadoes. And so um, I can put that link in the chat too. That also went out. We're also sending that out to all of our state newspapers um, to see if they want to run it as an op-ed as well. So just wanted to let you know about that. And then next week we will have the Kentucky Board of Education meeting. They're meeting in Louisville at the Kentucky School for the Blind. Um, and there will be several recognition items uh, at that meeting as well. So thank you. OK, thanks, Tony. Great work. Um, all right, we'll pause here and just see if there are any other questions or items that um, superintendents that are on with us want to raise. And uh, the one that I will put forward is, uh, do we want to meet again in a couple of weeks and have another huddle like this just to check in? Um, we certainly don't want to uh, take up anyone's time with additional meetings unless we need them, but I defer to you on um, telling uh, you to tell us when these meetings have reached the end of their utility for you. We're happy to keep them going as long as you, uh, as long as they're beneficial to you. Great. Got a thumbs up from Lenny. Well, there's a vote of one, Lenny. Well, I think it would be beneficial just to keep track of what's going on legislatively as much as anything, you know, and every couple of weeks, I don't think it's bad. So uh, okay. that's up to you, Commissioner. Glad to do it. Okay, we got uh, Lenny and Charles. That's uh, that's that's enough for now. And of course, uh, you can. Yeah, let's keep going. And every couple of weeks, I'm in. Gary's in. I'll, I'll answer too. Thanks, Gary. Uh, we'll keep going. And, and then, of course, you can decide for you. Thanks, Rob. Also, if, if these are of value to you, uh, keep keep coming in. We'll try to keep them short as we have today. Uh, please let us know if there's anything that we weren't able to touch on in the time that we had uh, for this huddle. And we'll, we'll add that to the next agenda. If it's something more urgent, we can reach out over email uh, independently. We'll keep working on these uh, safe funds and, and getting those out to you. Um, as quickly as we can, and we'll also work to keep track on the, the legislation that's, that's uh, making its way through as well. Thanks, everybody. Take care.